would you film an urban Indian now? Oh, wow. Because we're hidden. Well, I mean, the funny thing is we're, we're hidden, but we're hidden in plain sight. People just don't look at us <laughs> and see us anymore. Uh, because the United States has gotten much more diverse, and the United, urban areas are much more brown, that we disappear into the brownness. Uh, you know, one of my jokes is that nobody ever thinks I'm Indian. They always just think I'm half of whatever they are. <laughs> so, you know, I go to New York, I get spoken to in 150 languages. <laughs> the cab drivers all think I'm either what they are, and they want to complain about who they hate, or they think I'm what they hate, and, you know, they won't talk to me at all. So, uh, uh, I mean, I've been chased down the street by people who thought I was, uh, I'm pronouncing it wrong, the Japanese indigenous folks, the salmon people, uh, anyway, anyway? Yeah, they, I got chased by the street. Some guy thought I was a giant annual. So, uh, 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 nope. Uh, so, uh, I think that's the way in which you disappear. Uh, uh, but in terms of what you'd show, you know, I mean, the, the choices are huge. Uh, one of the things I also really like about the film is that it's all Indians. I mean, it's a complete, you know, isolated experience. And that's not really how we live our lives anymore. So and we're not central in one neighborhood. Yeah. We're all over. Yeah, and Travelers is gone, so <laughs> you can't film there anymore. Uh, it was the Indian bar in Seattle. Now they dispersed us, damn it. But uh, uh, relocation from Travelers. Uh, you were probably conceived there, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 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 so, you know, people. Individual people are popping into my head in Seattle. You know, I'm thinking of the lawyers, you know, or, or college professors, and, you know, writers. Uh, so our diversity of experience has been incredibly broadened. So I think you just have a lot more choices than exiles did. Uh, uh, so I don't know. I mean, There was a, you know, some filmmaker was asking, so tell your damn story. Who are you? How did you get here? That's my always, that's sort of my reflexive response. Uh, one of the things I'd love to see is a lot more genre films. We're all so artistic. I mean, can't somebody make like an Indian kung fu flick? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's one of the problems with Native American artists also is that we're all college professors. We're all just as concerned with theory as we are with making the art. So I just wish there'd be a, you know, Indian zombie movie. Or, or, uh, you know, I mean, I have a, a, I have a feature in my head, some, you know, and it, it's, uh, I just have the poster, <laughs> the movie poster, and it's an Indian guy, and it's Michael Gray Eyes, if you know who he is. He's a big, muscular, handsome Indian guy, just, you know, really Indian looking. And, uh, uh, and, and the movie's called Johnny Fire, and he's just looking mad, he's all beat up and scarred and scratched and bloody. And underneath it just said, he's just pissed. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to be some exploitation film where he's just kicking the shit out of people. And, and when they ask him, what, what are you doing? What, why are you doing this? And he just, I'm just pissed. So, but even, we haven't explored other fields. Of, you know, we're so new in this and our ambitions are so narrow. So, I mean, I've been reading a lot of younger writers lately and they're expanding a little bit. But by and large, they're still writing, you know, poetry. It's like, come on, sell out a little bit. So, uh, but no, we're all concerned with me. Yes. And you talk about making films or being who you are. If you really want, don't dream of Hollywood anymore. It's dead, it's gone. Whatever you think it was or whatever dreams you have about it, Taxi Driver does not get made in Hollywood anymore. Whatever film you loved growing up and you think that's the shit, that will not get made anymore, and it doesn't get made anymore. And one of the things that's happened to brown filmmakers is that the film, the indie, indie, edgy, interesting, artistic films about white folks that used to get made by studios now have to get made by independents. And so, you know, those indie films made by white people about white people have completely pushed us farther into the margins, have made us even less commercially viable. Uh, so the only way you even have a chance now is to do it yourself. Uh, 
you know, screen it yourself. There's a digital projector here. You know, buy a goddamn digital play in your living room. Because uh, the notion of being some Indian person who gets discovered and you know is making films starring you know Adam Beach having love scenes with Charlize Theron, it ain't gonna happen. Uh, not gonna happen. Uh, now, if you make Johnny Fire, maybe it'll happen. <laughs> but it won't be Michael Gray eyes, it'll be Keanu Reeves. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we've been marginalized even more in film, but the technology that's available now makes it much easier for anybody to pick up a camera. We are making a documentary, and we bought these amazing little HD cameras that are this big. And we just got back the images, and they're pretty nice. And the people who shot it were the some of the subjects in the documentary. We sent it, we didn't have no money, so we bought the cameras and said, shoot yourself for two days. And we're just getting back the footage, and they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Looks good. <laughs> so, uh, you got an you know, Apple laptop and a $99 HD camera, and you get decent sound, and make the exiles. So in a way, you have to circle back to where Ken McKenzie started if you want a chance.